My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. This podcast is entitled, Revamping Your Career for Digital Oil & Gas. Once a week, it seems, someone asks me how they can transition their oil and gas career into digital. Well, as a public service, here's my thinking on this problem. I get why people in oil and gas want to transition their careers. The upturn in prices has not translated into more jobs or industrial expansion the way it used to. For example, from my perch in Calgary, I can still see vast emptiness in the form of hollow blue glass office towers. This isn't necessarily an accident. Oil and gas executives want to keep a lid on hiring because they can't really tell if the oil market recovery will be strong and sustained. But this time around, oil job markets are not self-correcting as they have been in the past. The normal decline in well productivity would usually trigger more drilling, but instead the shortfalls look to be offset by ramping production in long stride capital projects like big new offshore wells and new oil sands production, by a shift in emphasis to reservoirs like shale, and by more efficient ways of working. And international competition is hotter. The US, Russia, and OPEC, say Venezuela and Iran, continue to max their production so as not to lose market share, and more importantly, to pick up share from the retreating North Sea. Just take a look at BP's statistical review and it underscores the problem. For Western oil professionals, the demand for oil has not budged in North America for a decade, yet the U.S. economy has grown by 34% since 2007. Same for the European OECD economies. All the demand growth is in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. The trend is clear. Westerners have solved the equation of economic growth without oil industry growth and will hold this line until electric motors come along to finish the job. Canadians have it worst of all. We have only one market for our oil, the U.S., and that market has quickly become an exporter itself. It won't want or need our oil, so we have to pay the Americans to take our oil off our hands, to the tune of anywhere between 40 and 80 million dollars a day. The growth markets of Asia are cut off because Canadians can't seem to reconcile the flourishing of their people with the flourishing of their environment. We've imposed carbon taxes that will make much of the industry uncompetitive. The career situation is likely to worsen before it improves. Many job categories in oil and gas are vulnerable to disruption by the digital technologies because digital is all about math and science, as opposed to art and the humanities, and oil and gas is very much about math. I can see many examples where eventual digital solutions will trigger painful adjustments in oil and gas among a whole range of privileged professional jobs, and these would include equipment operations, from trucking, cranes, and construction, as this equipment becomes autonomous. Data interpretation for seismic reservoir production, which is enabled by artificial intelligence. And facilities management, that is site visits, inspections, and routine maintenance, which leverage visual sensors to eliminate all the driving around. And in the back office, production accounting and finance will also fall to artificial intelligence and blockchain. And finally, product trading, which is the purchase, sale, charter, shipping, and receiving of product, will also move on to blockchain. Anyone in oil and gas whose job still looks largely the way it did in 2015 is in for a rude awakening, unless they're prepared. If you haven't read it, pick up Blue Ocean Strategy by two researchers with INSEAD. It's a business book whose basic premise is that businesses, like sailboats, should seek to avoid crowded and competitive red oceans with a lot of blood in the water, cutthroat pricing, and razor-thin margins. Instead, businesses should sail for blue oceans, where there are few competitors, and space where expansion is plentiful. It's a good way to think about repositioning your career as this wave of digitalization in the industry unfolds. Sail your career to the digital blue ocean. But where is there blue ocean in digital oil and gas? Well, I see several unstoppable trends in digital that give strong clues as to what a future of digital will look like. Number one is the Internet of Things. Sensors are falling in cost and will be strapped to everything movable and fixed. They will be able to measure anything from temperature, speed, vibration, sound, pressure, you name it. They will have thrifty power needs and will have the smarts to connect to any network for sharing that data. 
and artificial intelligence. The amount of data thrown off by sensors is so voluminous that it overwhelms the historic tools of Excel that oil and gas has used to manage in the past. Only the new and modern tools, like artificial intelligence and machine learning, have the wherewithal to ingest, fix, process, and interpret all that data. Data science as a profession takes off. And robotics. Learning machines like robots will be able to take that digested and interpreted data and apply it in a rote fashion. As much as 80% of what we think of today as human-only work is actually low-value repetitive work that robots could do. Robots will take the form of smarter machines as well as software routines for executing work tasks. Robots will become professional assistants. And cloud computing. Cloud is the only practical solution to connect all of the sensors, house and process all this data, and secure it properly from threats and tampering. And last but not least is blockchain. The sensors, the AI machines, and the robots are going to be secured using blockchain. Blockchain and its sibling, encryption, provide the immutable evidence that a sensor, a machine, or a robot is trustworthy, executes the work, and ties that work back to an owner, an asset, or a contract. These five trends, and of course there are several others, virtual reality, agile tools, digital ERP, gamification, are all growing much faster than the oil and gas industry and are in high demand in many industries, including agriculture, mining, utilities, logistics, manufacturing, and the public sector, all at the same time. This is what I call blue ocean conditions for your career. What these trends imply is that there's going to be growing scarcity of skills in a wide range of areas, leading to high paying jobs for those with the skills. For example, Amazon dropped many cities from contention as a destination for the second headquarters because of the scarcity of data scientists available for immediate hire. China is already reporting huge shortages of robot operators, millions of unfilled jobs, to supervise all of the industrial robots they acquire every year. By marrying your current deep know-how and skill set in oil and gas with the scarce skills of digital, you create a unique and very rare combination. Believe me, The school systems are not yet turning out professionals in the petroleum sector with digital skills, like agile work practices, coding, and data science. It takes time to find the teachers, revamp the curriculum, and obtain the accreditation. But schools are already working on this problem to deliver these new skills to the market. It won't be long, two or three years perhaps, before the junior petroleum engineer coming out of school is not only a digital native, that is, they were born with a smartphone in the crib, but they're able to code and can apply that digital know-how to oil and gas. So how do you go about transitioning your career? Well, I've shifted my career repeatedly, beginning with a job as a programmer with Imperial Oil to a 30-year stint with one of the big four professional firms, and I'm now on my own. It's not as hard as it sounds. Your first step is to pick your blue ocean. In my view, it doesn't really matter which digital field becomes your jam, just pick one, as they're all in demand. The hot area in 2018 is data science, and frankly, it's just getting going. My selection is digital strategy in oil and gas. Next, become a digital oil and gas authority in your field. Take a course or two. The university and college systems are all experimenting with new offerings, or be digital and go the online route. Next, change what you read. Instead of devoting your reading time to keeping abreast of oil and gas developments, Subscribe to some sites that have only digital news. There's plenty. I use Twitter to follow leading digital thinkers and their perspectives. I'd then discover the key authors in your field and read up on them. You can find them on YouTube, LinkedIn, and blog sites. Try downloading freeware versions of digital technology and apply it to your domain area. Nothing speaks louder to an employer when you can say, I've actually coded a smart contract on blockchain. Then, revamp your online presence and your resume to emphasize that you're not just an oil and gas professional, but a digital oil and gas professional. Write an article or two that showcases how you would bring digital ideas into your oil and gas domain. Publishing something, even on LinkedIn, makes you instantly credible. Having a point of view gives you something interesting to discuss. Then try visiting the digital startups in oil and gas. Most oil and gas towns have a thriving sector in digital innovation, and they're always looking for fresh talent to fuel their growth. Perhaps your next career job is with a tech company rather than an oil producer. And why not volunteer at any of the incubators and accelerators in your town? Calgary, for instance, has a dozen such creatures, from Nucleus, Zone Startup, The Hunter Hub, Rainforest, and Platform. 
Accidental collisions are one of Silicon Valley's secrets. Frankly, there's never been a better time to be in energy because of the amount of change coming at it. Now's the time to position your career in the blue ocean. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.